<laughs> Welcome. This is Chip Roasting. I'm Wally. I am somebody. I'm Brennan. I'm not Brennan. Sometimes I am, sometimes I'm not. We're roasting some chips. <laughs> Welcome. Sorry, it's been Hello. a month again. Yeah. Uh, we're very bad at this, but uh, life is busy. And Brennan mm -hmm. still does not want to be probed. So. Nope. I that 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 will change during this episode, but also m m the the underlying philosophy will not change. My name will change. Yes. Underlying philosophy, no. Yeah. Still not Brennan though. What is no, up, uh, Mr. Wolf Gator Entertainment? <laughs> That's right. That's my real name. Um, yep. 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 Yeah. So <clears throat> not only is it, is it a month, it's been about a month since we recorded an episode. We were recording on a Sorry. Saturday afternoon. <laughs> That's our bad. Yeah. Saturday afternoon. Which this is, is weird. This is how devoted we are to you, our audience, our one audience. Actually, um, we've gotten real. Well, there's been eight listens on the last episode on mm. our podcast or like our pod streaming service. Yeah. And um, there have been five watches. Of at least 42 Ooh. minutes long. Like the average comes out about 42 minutes. So, I mean, well, people this is are what watching. we're doing for you. Yeah. For our loyal fans, then, is we're recording on a Saturday you. afternoon. <laughs> yeah. We could be doing other things, probably. We're probably invited uh, probably. to other things. Some, I'm some, not, some, some, but I have other things. But like, this is not theoretically. Theoretically, right. Yeah. Theoretically. We're, but we're, we are putting aside our theoretical plans to be here yep. for y'all. Yep, I could be out watching Cocaine Bear right now. <laughs> which Ooh, is I out. I watched that movie actually. Did I've you? seen a lot of movies. How was Cocaine Bear? Here. Highly recommend Regal Unlimited if you have the time to see movies because you basically get to see a bunch for for free. Oh, as nice. long as you see more than like two movies a month, you are stealing money from Regal actively oh, by sweet. engaging in this plan and well, this plot. And I see Regal... movies all the time. So. Regal is technically a local company to this place I live. Yeah, yeah. They were founded well, here, I believe. Yes. Um, and there's a giant theater not that far from my house, so I should they, go they, get that. They were indeed founded in the country in which you live. Yes, yes Canada. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's Ugh. that's where we're from. But mm -hmm. uh, and Cocaine Bear also takes place in Canada, <laughs> where I live. <laughs> yes. But uh, anyway. Uh, lots oh. of news, lots of Star Wars we missed. We didn't talk about the last two episodes of Bad Batch last episode, so now we're seven episodes behind. Cool. I am excited to talk about it from what I remember, because I remember two of the episodes I liked a whole lot, and then I have the notes for I two liked... of three of them, and I don't have Decently. notes for four of them. It's like it's it's looping around in a good direction. I am yes. very optimistic because like finally we seem to have a direction for Bad Batch, yes. which I love because like Clone Wars, you knew where that would end. Right. rebels for the most part you knew where that would end bad yes. batch it's like they have so much unexplored territory i feel like i've done this before i feel like i've said this before probably on podcast we repeat ourselves here i am lot. saying so. it again yeah because we we're like a, a we're approximately 230 episodes in so it's gonna get some 57 i think this is 57 okay i believe this is episode 57 anyway so let's start off the news let me make an a uh I would have that then, so I don't forget. Well, in three episodes, at the okay. end of the episode, I have to go back in all of our episodes and find where we said the word Mark Hamill and put them all in a comp in a compilation at the end of the 60th episode. Because I said I would do that <laughs> for some mm -hmm. reason. Wow. On seven twenty one twenty one, I said 60th episode compilation of us saying Mark Hamill over every podcast. I have fallen off the Mark Hamill train. I I, I keep from. We're getting to give him credit for all of his acting stuff here. I know. Well, speaking of Mark Hamill, this is a good place to start the news. Yeah. Do you remember uh, Bert Kreischer's stand-up routine? Not uh, at all. A couple of years ago, the I Am oh, the Machine. Yes, I did see that trailer. Well, I that did movie see that is trailer. coming out, and our favorite Mark Hamill is mm -hmm. himself playing yes. a character. Uh, he's playing uh, Bert the Conqueror. Well, I call him. I know it was Bert the Conqueror because that's where I first saw him on the Travel oh, Channel. Yeah. Uh, but he's playing Bert Kreischer's father, and the movie plot uh, follows Bert and his father as they are kidnapped by those who wronged Bert, who Bert wronged 20 years ago while drunk on a college semester abroad in Russia. Hilarity and action will ensue, and Mark Hamill even does speed. So, <laughs> <laughs> movie comes out this month. Ah, uh, that is going to be a wild run. This month, I almost forgot yeah, it this month. month. Yep. Wow. So that'll be. Yep. Something. <laughs> 
Uh, out of all looks stand-up routines, pretty promising. Yeah. Out of all stand-up routines, I'm glad that they decided to go with that one to make a movie out of. Yeah, like I still remember when I was in high school. I think, and you would see that comedy routine everywhere, everywhere. Mm-hmm. everywhere. So you know, like the movie actually looks kind of promising based on the trailer, which is awesome. So it's. So, <laughs> I saw someone online say, didn't they come out with cocaine bear like already? <laughs> 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 Which it basically just looks like one of those type movies. Yeah, it's like yeah. so stupid, so funny, but it's I'm excited for it. Um uh, still I still need to see cocaine bear, but that uh, mm-hmm. maybe I'll go get the regal thing, see cocaine bear, ant man and the wasp, and uh oh yeah, uh, the machine movie. Yeah. All in all in one go. Um <clears throat> Little uh, little uh, transition here. Disney has announced in February. They announced February eighth that Zootopia three, Frozen, sorry, Zootopia two, Frozen three, Toy Story five, and officially in their works. And, and there's one more, right? Uh, there might be, probably, but that's all I saw. No, 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 you, no. You, you are right. It was, it, it was only those three because yes. I was totally the same announcement. I thought there were four. I don't know why there are only three. Yes. Yep. And all I have to say about that is no, stop, please. Wait. No one wants these. Did you say Inside Out two as well? Because they no, talked but I more think we've about, known about those that, updates. Though. Yeah, I think we've known about that for a I while. I thought I thought they talked more about it, but perhaps not. Um, either way, Zootopia, I like Zootopia two. I, I guess, but Frozen three and Toy Story five do not need to happen. Uh, I'm pretty sure they're gonna keep making Frozen movies indefinitely here. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, probably uh, that the first movie was in theaters for like a year and a half. Yeah. Oh it made God. them a lot of money, and it still makes them a lot of money just because of the oh. songs and the and the the the, the toys and stuff. Speaking and such. of films that have been in movies theaters for, for forever, uh, Puss in Boots two is still in like in theaters, <laughs> and this is like is it a two? Good couple I thought weeks. it was three. No, no, there is no three. Yes, oh. it's two because the first. I thought that was the third. Okay. Puss in Boots movie came out a while ago, and mm-hmm. it sucked in my opinion. It was yes, not I, good. Yeah, this movie came out. It was phenomenal. That's if you what I've had heard. a chance to see it yet. I would highly recommend adding that to your list of films to see in Regal in March mm-hmm. because it like it's it's probably one of the best like kids movies, quote unquote, that I've seen in like a, a long time here. So this is the third one. Puss in Boots what? came out in 2011. Puss in Boots, the three Diablos came out in 2012. And Puss in Boots, Whoa. the last witch came out in 2022. Ex- there's a- another Puss in Boots film? Yeah. Which that can't be right. Yes, there's three. Nah. That's what I, I had to make sure. You're I'm glad we oh, stuck with on. Disney here. But anyway, I... Puss in- yeah, Puss in Boots 3, I've heard amazing things about. I've heard it's like actually one of the best animated films to come out of the U.S. in a long time. Mm-hmm. Um, I just looked up Puss in Boots 2, and it's telling me that one is... The Last Wish. Hold on. What do you say it was called? The, the three, three Diablos. Diablos. Yep, you are right. Oh, that's not a movie. <laughs> it's not? I don't know. It's a short. It is 12 oh, okay. minutes long. Its runtime oh, okay. is listed as 12 minutes. So it is the second one, but okay, it's, okay. The th- it's the third story, I guess. It's told with puts Yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, yeah, I've heard I've, I've heard amazing things about it. Uh, I do mm-hmm. not think we'll hear amazing things about Frozen 3 or Toy Story 5. Um, Toy they Story need to stop 5. with Toy Story. They need to just stop. Yep. Yeah. Someone made an interesting point about t- Toy Story Five. They were like, "Toy Story Three worked because it was the end of, like, of Andy's stories." Yeah, that was a good conclusion. And they announced Toy Story Four, and they had it, and it was more of the end of Woody's story. So yep. that kind of worked as a good conclusion for that. What is Toy Story Five supposed to be like the end of? Well, and who are they following? Are they going to follow yeah. Woody? Or are they going to follow Buzz and the game? Yeah, like, I'm. I... They just need to stop. I mean, they've ended the story perfectly twice. Just stop. Yeah, they're going to keep making movies and, uh, un, until that dead horse is glue. <laughs> uh, I think it might be glue already. But they're just they're going to keep going to keep yeah. beating it until their bat gets stuck to the glue and they cannot hit it anymore. Yeah, yep. Um <sighs> uh, speaking of remakes on March 2nd Disney's Haunted Mansion's first trailer came Ooh, out. Ooh, yeah, I saw uh, it that. Stars Rosario really Dawson, good. Lakeith Stanfield, Tiffany Haddish, Owen Wilson, Danny DeVito, Jamie Lee Curtis and Jared Leto as the Hatbox Ghost. Movie the premieres really July good. 28th. Dude, it looks awesome. The trailer looked phenomenal. It looked really good. And I know the original Haunted Mansion movie which came out in like 2004, 2005 with Eddie sure. Murphy. 
people like it. I like it. It's a good uh, nostalgia watch. It's not a good movie, though. Yeah, I own it on DVD or we owned it on DVD while I was a child. And I watched it once and I was like, this is an all right film, but that's kind of all I remember about it. I don't remember like anything specific. I just remember being like, yeah, all right, sure. It's it was overly goofy with some Easter eggs, whereas this one seems to be chock full of Easter eggs. Oh, sweet. And it actually is creepy because I kind of want them to kind of lean more into the horror, even though it's a children's movie or supposed to be a children's movie and a children's Um, ride. Right. Kind of too. But like when you're a child, like especially me, because I remember freaking out about it when I when you're a child, that ride is genuinely scary. I would not go on the ride like like uh, the first time my dad took me to Disney World. He's like, oh, let's ride this. I I got all the way up to the very front. Me too. And I was like, I I was, I was like. I was like, I will not r- ride this thing. Not a I saw chance. the changing faces uh, right before you get into oh, the stretching elevator, and yeah. I flipped out. Mm-hmm. I would yeah. not get on the ride. It's a yeah. scary ride, so they have to like, lean into that for it to be a good homage to the ride. Yeah, I, was I like, think I'm, they're going to. I'm tapping out here. I'm done, and like I didn't ride it until the <laughs> last time I was at Disney, where I was like, oh yeah, I never uh, ride, I rode this ride. Twenty twenty one, I think, when you went. Yeah, like yeah. yeah, it was like the very end of 2021 mm-hmm. where where I was like, you know what, now's a good time to ride it because yeah. I'm I'm no longer like a nine year old child or however I old I was before. Yeah. And it was really fun. I was like, I can't believe that I missed it as a kid, but also I don't know if 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 I would have liked it as much as a right. They're not like it's not all that scary, no. but like just like as a kid when you're walking up there, you're like, I do not know what is behind these uh these these doors here right so i i kind of hope the movie has the same kind of vibe of like oh is it scary or is it not and you get on there and you start watching and you're like okay this is awesome <laughs> right and, I, and just from the trailer alone I, th- I think it looks like they're gonna try to try to lean into that yeah my only yeah, concern yeah. is with a comedian playing matt let madam leota and i love tiffany haddish that's how i found yeah. her was through her stand-up comedy oh yeah um so that'll be interesting to see how she slides in that role um uh, but i think i I really hope they at least let Owen Wilson say wow once, unlike they did in Loki. Yeah, what was with Loki? <laughs> I don't real. know why he wasn't allowed to say wow. But that's all I want from this movie. I want it to be a little scary. Very scary for children, but a little scary for like adults. Like the ride. Mm-hmm. Um, or not scary, but creepy. Um, and then I want Owen Wilson to say wow, and I think that mm-hmm. I think it'll be a, a successful movie. Um, I, like, I like the rest of the, sta- rest of the cast, though. It's really, There's really still hope in Marvel for him saying wow in it's true. Loki, Loki season, season two. two, but I don't know why they're waiting. I don't know. They, they should have let him say wow at least once in season one. Um, Star Wars news. Uh, on February 9th, Star Wars announced the Young Jedi Tales will premiere Dis- on Disney Plus and Disney Junior on May 4th. It's the first mm. on-screen appearance of the High Republic, so before... Before then, we will make uh, oh. High Republic. Before that happens, before May, we'll make a High Republic rundown. All right. Um, I gotta I think there's a book. I think there might be two or three books that come out before then, so I'll be able to. I'll be. It'll all be fresh in my mind, so I can sweet do a quick rundown of. And it. Um, I may now have access to some audiobooks from the oh, High Re- Republic era. So who knows? Maybe sweet. I'll know some stuff too. Yeah, yeah. I highly recommend reading those. They're really, really good. Um, it shows it's the golden age of the Jedi, um, and the 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 villain the villains they've made for that era are really intriguing. So sweet. Um, and I think that that's the only Star Wars news for there. Um, Marvel, the non MCU stuff. Well, I guess I don't know. It's it's in a weird place for Sony, but uh, Spider Man oh, yeah. Noir series was announced mm-hmm. uh, to be in the works. It's a take place in the 1930s. It will not be about Peter Parker, but some other. Spider-Man. Um, Interesting. This, they kind of delve into the Spider-Man noir and in, into the multiverse. Um, not in, yeah, no, into the Spider-Verse. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Do we think it'll still be played by Nicolas Cage? Um, that's interesting. I don't know. Um, I don't think there's been any news since then about it. But uh, mm. um, it'll be interesting. Uh, I like that they're kind of. And I mean, we've heard for months now that Sony's kind of looking around at the different Spider-Man universes and different spider people. Um, They're trying to find something that works. They're desperately trying to find something that'll work for them. Yeah. And I know they have that uh, Madam Web movie coming out. They they have a bunch of stuff in the works. Hopefully something sticks. 
Um, I think the Spider-Man Noir series, if approached the right way, can work. But I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. Um, especially since they don't have access to any of the other noir characters. Oh yeah. Like uh, like I think there's a Gray Hulk. Oh. And there's a and there's a Daredevil character as well. I, mm. We'll see what happens. Um, it, it it'll be interesting, especially if Mar- if Marvel's working with them to do it, then it you know they'll have access yeah. to those characters. I think Marvel and Sony just yeah. need to like treat everything like trading cards, like keep swapping things. Yeah. Back yeah, and it, forth. The yeah. audience won't care as long as they're getting some really good entertainment and really good quality stories. Right. Um, Kevin Feige teased the other day that uh, Fantastic Four will be coming soon. And uh, I straight up don't believe him. Yeah. Fantastic Four is like starting to piss me off a lot because it's like if you guys weren't ready for it, just don't do it because Fantastic Four is supposed to be the conclusion of Phase Four. First of all, we yeah. were we were originally supposedly going to have Fantastic Four already here, and mm-hmm. now it's like oh we you know wait till Phase Six, but then they'll have them. But then the director or writer I don't remember who of like the Kang Dynasty uh, came out and was like. I don't have any plans to use Fantastic Four mm-hmm. in my movie here, mainly because you know they're not in in a in the MCU yet. Right, and it's like if we're just releasing them to have them be kind of in their own standalone movie, and then we're not going to touch them again forever. It's like why this huge hype on bringing them them in? Just wait till the right. time's right, and then do it then. But it's like oh, get ready for this exciting. You know they're going to be here. They're going to be like 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 integral to the MCU, and like there's no plan to use them. In like the big team up movies you're about to to have, like right, what's going on here? Just wait till the time's right. Yeah, they definitely announced it prematurely because I remember they announced it back in 2020 that this would be happening, or at least 20, yep. maybe it was 2019. I remember it, it was, was 2020. 20... We were still doing this. We were doing this pro- this podcast when they announced it. I think it was. It was. It was the Disney. It was like the Disney. No, like... no, they they announced it. It was when we were doing the uh, Star Wars, uh, uh, the Christmas special watch through. It was back in December of 2020 when they announced it. No, we were doing the watch. Wait, hold on. Yeah, I, dude, I know. Time is Look. wild. <laughs> that was three years yeah. ago. Yeah. Like hold. two and a half years ago. But, I mean, they've, it, it, point, point being, they've announced it. They've had it announced for a while and nothing's happened with it. Yeah. Like we haven't gotten casting, we haven't really gotten a, like a speculated story, scriptwriter. What is going on with this film or yeah. this series? Whatever, just do something. Is Fantastic Four curse? No, I <laughs> I was right here. It was announced in 2019 during that Comic Con. Then uh, I okay. thought it was during a Comic Con event, and I was like, it couldn't have been 2020 because that would have been. Uh, with COVID and everything like that, mm-hmm. so they wouldn't have had some kind of big in person thing. Yeah, no, yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. They they had done it. Comic Con then they reannounced it then during twenty the twenty twenty uh the income meeting or whatever they call them for Disney. Yeah, yeah they did yeah, reannounce yeah. it then when they announced all the the new stuff. But again, it fits four years. Nothing's happened with it. Do something. Yeah, or it's just stop hyping it up. If you're not gonna yeah. do anything, stop hyping it up. Yeah, just drop it off. You've had movies that haven't worked out before. Mm-hmm. Captain America and the Serpent Society. I don't know if that was ever actually 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 confirmed or not. That one may have not actually been confirmed. I don't know if they like, ever, yeah, they ever announced it or anything, but yeah. But like the Inhumans movie was actually on the slate before ever. It you was. had to you, you had to drop that one off. Like if this doesn't work, just take some time, guys. Yeah. Please. I mean, yeah. you I mean you kind of can't now because you've been hyping it up for so long, but just mm-hmm. in the future, remember our words you're listening to us right now kevin feige <laughs> you are on here you are all 13 of 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 our listeners are speaking directly into your soul <laughs> and i think everyone would agree with us um mm-hmm. speaking of i don't know about this i don't know about everyone i don't know about like half half the people i i'll talk about that, the 13 listeners to, uh, oh yes 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 we may have Include, 13 which I guess includes matt people on our side yeah yeah we may have um, 13 people on our side who knows it was leaked uh speaking of which speaking of disappointing it was leaked that only secret invasion and loki season two were confirmed for 2023 yep in terms of the mcu shows echo and ironheart are unlikely to come out in 2023 due to marvel wanting to spread out its releases and spend more time on post-production which 
it's both good and bad. It's yeah. it's great because we'll likely get better TV shows, which is something we've been complaining about this entire time. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's yeah. bad because they're already announcing stuff too far to, into the future, and if they mm-hmm. keep pushing that stuff back, it's hard to build hype. Yeah. Um, yep. Around it, it's hard to stay excited. So there's no. Yeah, that is exactly where. Yeah. Where I am at as well, because like I am kind of pumped that like with Echo especially because of how. Mm-hmm. Echo ties in to like to Daredevil and Kingpin and their stories that they're going to take more time with that and and also hopefully yeah. to give Echo kind of the hype that she needs because you know most people who've been hype about it they've been hype about it because of Daredevil and, and Kingpin and all that which you know that is also me and I'm going to be invested in their stories no matter what but I also right. want Echo to become her own like established character and if this show kind of just you know, rushes past all of that right. then. There's there's gonna be no hype to keep her around, which would mm-hmm. suck. Um, yeah, because she, like, she was a good, she was an interesting character in Hawkeye. We just never, yeah, yeah, we never really got to spend much time with her. And yeah, because you know Hawkeye we're going was on also a short show. And you know, with them not coming out this year, that'll be two years since we last saw Echo. Yeah. So yeah. so like I'm I'm glad they're slowing things down. And for like Echo and like Ironheart and. Uh, Agatha, like I'm not too disappointed. I was like, oh, having to wait like an extra year, like that's fine. But for the other shows that I've announced, like w- like way down the road, like mm-hmm. uh, Daredevil was originally supposed to come out next year. I'm uh-huh. pretty sure. I, uh, I think it was either late shows. last year, or early 2025. I don't remember. Yeah, I'm no, I think it was. I think sure it was 2024. Yeah. 2024. I don't remember any other shows off the top of my my head. But there was House, there was Agatha. There was yeah, yeah. yeah. I guess it was one that was supposed to come out remember. this year. I'm pretty sure, or 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 early next year. Something, but, yeah, something like that. Either way. But anyway, there's been a lot. It's like you know those like like Daredevil. If that gets pushed off to 2025 or 2026, it's like, yeah, that's fine. You know, it's it's kind of, like no one's going to be able to maintain their hype right. for that long. But when it gets closer, you know, it'll come back up. But for shows after that, it's it's like that's going to slow things down a lot mm-hmm. they're not people to announce new projects if they decide to change directions and they want to cram something in there there's not going to be the space especially if the movies stick on the track that they're currently on right now i honestly don't think they will i i think the movies are going to get slowed down a lot for the next avengers movie i would be surprised if like we, we got that in, in anywhere close to the announced time frame already here yeah, like, they say 2026 or yeah 27 yeah I, we're which not is, gonna get them. Yeah, it was 2026. I'm pretty sure. Was yeah, the, both was, of them. Was right? the date? Yeah, they, like, they is, weren't that far apart. Which is wild because from the start of phase one to the end of of phase three, that was like what, like 12 years? Yeah. And they're trying to do this all all again in six, and it's like, guys, slow down. Right. So I am glad that, that, that this is happening, but now that we already kind of know where it's supposed to end, it's. It's like has Marvel kind of destroyed this buildup of hype that they would have originally got in here. So, yeah. but what? I I I I am glad they're doing this to raise the quality, and hopefully the quality is raised because, like, right. I think everyone's been able to notice some kind of dip in quality in various areas. Some people yeah, are more for. That's what I've heard. Some people are are more for giving of dips and qualities and like certain spots but like you know there's at least one thing you've noticed where you're like this is not as good as it used to be here so right. hopefully this gives them the time to kind of build back into all of that yeah yeah and <clears throat> if we look at the timelines it if everything comes out when there's like when they say that as they push it back it'll have been two years since we've seen uh, seen uh Echo and Kingpin and Daredevil. It would have been a year well, since we've seen Ironheart. Well, Daredevil was in She-Hulk. Oh yeah, you're right. You're right. I mean, it's still it's a, it's a year then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a year since so, we've seen Daredevil. I had, oh god, how did I forget about that? I was thinking about She-Hulk, but I just forgot he was in it. Yeah, it's um, so when, it's been a what, bit longer since and more to the point, and Echo. Um, and we'll get into this soon, but it'll have been almost a, it'll been a, have been over a year since we saw uh, Miss Marvel when the Marvels come out. Yeah, it'll because be, it was, we don't know what's supposed, happening with it, She-Hulk. It was, yeah, because uh, the Marvels was supposed to be in July and that got 
pushed back to November. I've seen because like they wanted to, t- to take their, their time with it and make sure the quality was up to where they wanted it to be, which right. I am grateful for that. Yeah. But like uh-huh. still, it's it's like you're just lengthening the gaps between seeing these characters. And I feel like Marvel used to do a great job. And it was mainly because they just had Iron Man, Captain America, Thor. And then they had like a filler slot for like right. a for like a new character. And, and they could ch- juggle those and spread those out well. And now they have so many characters, which is awesome, but they're not doing a good job of juggling them and make sure we're consistently seeing them on screen. Right, right. And which which leads us into the the Marvels, like as you said, uh, November tenth, twenty twenty three release. Uh, we mm-hmm. did get a we did get our first uh, poster on the day Ant Man yes. came out. I believe we got the first poster. Uh, mm-hmm. Looks really good, but uh, we've not seen Captain Marvel in. Well, I guess at the end of Miss Marvel, we saw her for like a yeah. second, but uh, we've not seen her in since Endgame. We've not seen Monica Rambeau since twenty twenty one. Mm-hmm. And we've not, and then it's and at that point it would have been over a year since we've seen this Marvel, and I understand that you know, like you said, they want to take their time and get everything out, <clears throat> but they, I think, they really they realized that too late and set up too much to do that. Yes, yep, yep, you are absolutely. And they announced way too much to do that. Absolutely so, correct. Um, you know, we're just kind of in this wall of just waiting now. Um, yeah. when, I don't. When is the next Marvel project? It's uh this month, I think. Secret Wait. Wars? When does Secret Wars come out? We don't... Or not Secret Wars, I'm sorry. No, it's I keep, Secret, I keep Invasion. Kind of, Secret Invasion. Secret yeah. I keep confusing the two. Yeah. When does that come out? Is that this month or is that next Secret month? Secret Invasion, it was rumored initially it would be February or March. Yeah, that's what we, I thought. We haven't gotten anything for that. The latest speculation is May. Is that it'll come out after Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. That's the last speculation that oh, I've seen. That's right. I forgot it's a show. So first episode, yeah. Even on Google, it says just a first episode. First episode, twenty twenty three. Yep. Um, yep. There's no confirmed not, date. We haven't seen Nick Fury in against. I think since Endgame. Or no, yeah, we saw him briefly in Spider Man. We but that wasn't actually okay. him. Yeah, we saw him in Spider Man. I mean, in the two. two. Yeah. Not even Spider Man three. Spider yep. Man two. Yeah, but Spider-Man 2, we heard him talked about it in Spider-Man 3, but we only saw him in Spider-Man 2 in like the post credit scene there because the him we saw during the movie actually wasn't him. It was right. uh, Talos. Talos. Was, that was his name. Or is, Talos, yeah. Talos, whatever. Yeah, which um, I love seeing him. He was a great character, but then, oh yeah, you know, so I am interested to see where that story will go, but it's, it's like Marvel used to, for the most part, they would like establish things and then like, a couple movies later, they would respond to those things. Right. And here it's like they're establishing things like, oh, we're going to respond to it here. And then it keeps getting pushed off. And it's less satisfying to the audience. And so they're like, hey, don't establish these things or make sure you know concretely when the audience will get the answer before you set this up. They, and I think they'll have learned from this, but I, I don't, I don't know why they ever strayed from it. They have just, they set up so much so fast and mm-hmm. ob- and obviously COVID is a contributing factor. I think a lot of these projects would have, would be out already had COVID not happened. Yeah, but, but like even also, still, at the, even at the time, they, yeah. they they said that they're going to do all this when you know early on. I don't think they ever did that. Like more than a year or two in the future. Whereas when they first came out with oh this is what's happening after Endgame, they came out like three four years in advance, and then then COVID pushed everything back, and then they tried to get everything out as fast as they can to keep to keep a similar timeline. And yeah. it's, it's not working, and clearly they've seen that. And hopefully, uh, after this multiverse saga, which by the which in in this time since our last podcast, they've officially like minted as the multiverse saga. Um, Dang. and and that's the most insane mess. thing is because I sent you a tweet, I think, about it, like yeah, about just the audacity of Marvel to call this the multiverse saga when we've only really seen See. one multiverse on screen and it's been a multiverse where green means stop and red means go and that's the (laughs) only difference that's all that we've seen and it's like come on guys like we've seen some stuff in loki here we saw some stuff in doctor strange we saw like you know characters from other multiverses in spider-man but like and 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 don't forget we, we got uh what if as well yeah yeah what happened in season two of what if like where yeah. is that? Oh, what's yeah, going that on with the other that? ones where they said they would come this year as well, and then it totally dropped. But off. what happened to it? Like yeah. we've heard nothing about what if season two, other yeah. than that they announced it. 
Oh man, yeah, and it's just a mess, in Marvel, right now. It's like, yeah. did they hire everyone from DC like when they got fired? Like, <laughs> shit. And it's like in the previous saga where it was called like the Infinity Saga. That was a really great buildup of the Infinity Stones to Thanos to everything. It's like, yeah, you can see why it's called. But they didn't the call it that till the, the end. Infinity Saga. Yeah, ex- 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 exactly, exactly. And here they're like prematurely being like, oh, multiverse saga, right? And we're not seeing any buildup to that at, no. at all. Out- outside of a few things that could really just be considered like not not like Easter eggs, like fan service might be like a good Better. word of okay. like, hey, it's it's we're like kind of tipping our toes into this but to really call it like oh the multiverse it's like you guys haven't even really touched like the multiverse yet right right and and then you have films in there like the black panther or black panther 2 wakanda forever that while a great film has nothing to do with anything yeah in the saga yeah yeah, like it's like maybe you're building up to something else there they're talking about like mutants and stuff already which is totally fine like i like i'm all for building up to that but like yeah yeah but like don't dub this like the multiverse saga where you're trying to do a million things all at the same time like if this needs to be like a a gap saga or something or whatever of like hey we're working to set things up in the future stay tuned Mm -hmm. saga then (laughs) sure yeah that makes sense but to call it the multiverse saga where you're it wasn't like they're building up to any one thing right now that sucks and and I and you know I guess not everything has to build up to it because, um, in the comics, just you know there'll just be these set of co- these sets of storylines that build that are in this one thing while everything else is doing yeah. their own thing, and mm-hmm. that's fine. But yeah, I don't I'm know. Just it's to... just they uh, they should have waited to call certain things the multiverse saga because She Hulk, Black Panther two, uh, uh, probably the Marvels and Miss Marvel. What the hell do they have to do with the multiverse? Yeah, and I'm tr- and I'm trying to think. Was there any like any movie at all in the Infinity Saga that was like ag- aggressively not tied in to the to the other movies? Because I'm trying to think, and every movie I can think of in some way like helped directly Hulk? tie in to multiverse. Probably well, it. But like but Hulk established the character, the and then Hulk yeah, was other... a very Im- important yeah, character in like the true. very end. So even it's like though, even with that, yeah. Because like yeah, the Hulk is, like it has a complicated Ant Man even in. yeah well, yeah yeah if, with Ant Man even it's like you established Ant Man Ant Man was an important, important part player of, yeah and like the very end so it's, it's Maybe, like each each thing Captain, they did was Winter Soldier that Titan. important well like well yeah no was it well like he wasn't that important like the individual character but the movie the was movie. like the all of shield which kind of oh, led right. to a lot of of the other yeah. events that kind of helped bring it all about so it's, it's, it's like all the things were important events that eventually led to here mm-hmm. and it's like in the multiverse saga maybe they're going to bring everything all together but it really seems like for like fractured events that can't tie together where i feel like with the infinity saga even in the moment you can be like okay i, I can see the coherent mm-hmm. picture that's being painted here because all the movies can kind of of like relate yeah, yeah, and and yeah, you're right. They're they're all tied in somehow. I mean, Thor Ragnarok didn't seem like it until the end. Yeah, because then at, at the very end, it's like oh, they're bringing as it's like it's like right before Infinity War. That movie ends yeah, like the beat before Infinity War starts. It is to it is to Infinity War what Rogue One is to New Hope. Yep. Yep. Um. Yeah, it's dude i mean even on look, the and, same and, beat and, where it's small ship and like, and like yes big yeah, ship, yeah, yeah. Even it's, it's pretty much the beat. same thing mm-hmm. um but the, the thing is with with a growing universe of characters not everything is going to connect and that's fine not everything has yeah. to connect but don't label an entire thing one thing without with everything not being that you know Ex- exactly because um, marvel's could... acting like it is supposed to be connecting and is supposed right. to be forming one coherent picture being like oh you, you guys don't don't understand you guys can't figure out where this is going that's on you and it's like what are you talking about give us <laughs> something cohesive it it's almost yeah they, they what they sh- they set it up at the, in the beginning with WandaVision, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, and um, what was the other one? What was the third movie, the third show that was out? Uh, what, Loki was that was, third? I think Loki was third. 
Because Hawkeye was fourth, right? And that came after Loki. Okay, so okay, let's take Loki. No, let's take Loki and WandaVision kind of as one thing, and then Falcon and the Winter Soldier, and then Hawkeye. Those three, those four shows set up three different ways that that universe could go and split into it and be fine. The multiverse saga was one. Uh, the other was just uh, world, uh, world problems, the things that Captain America has always dealt with, and Captain America, yeah. whoever it is, moving forward, which we know it's Sam, always always dealt with, and that's fine. Mm-hmm. And he could be included in the multiverse, so it doesn't matter. And then the street level heroes, they could, and they, and they can still go that way. And only call that one branch of multiverse saga, but encapsulating all of those things and calling it the multiverse saga is not going to work. It yeah. doesn't make any sense. Yeah, and, and and just all their worlds seem so divided here. I mean, let's just take like a Miss Marvel, Kate Bishop, She Hulk, Spider Man. Let's just take those four, for example, mm-hmm. with how they've which with with how their recent projects have been established. I cannot really imagine them in one cohesive world all of their stories seem t- too separated for you to imagine like like right now the characters just running into each other on the street i know that they're going to bring them all together at some point but it's like they could have related things a bit more given it kind of the same who was it you said like, you said she hulk spider-man hawk uh kate bishop and who um it's marvel Ms. marvel okay and three yeah, of those yeah. shows take place in the same freaking series city yep or yeah, three of those yeah. things take place in the same freaking city. At least She-Hulk's on in LA. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I like it's I don't get it. And then there's Moon Knight and Shang-Chi. It's wild. Which yeah. take place in two other cities and are just completely they connected Shang-Chi at the end, but Moon mm-hmm. Knight's just on it. It's just over there. Yeah. And, and same with like, Werewolf by Night, which I know they might incorporate at some point, but he's just also there. Yeah, like part of the MCU. It's, it's just so bizarre because with how Thor, Iron Man, and and Captain and Captain America were in in like the f- first uh story arc, like they all had their own individual movies, all their own individual tones. But like we saw them interact on screen during Avengers, and even before that, you could be like, I can see these guys in the same. Well, they were and they were approached by, by by uh, what's his name from Shield, uh, uh, uh Nick Fury. Yep, yep. At the yep, end yep, of every yep. one of their movies, even Hulk, I think, or at least he was approached by Tony. At the end of that, yeah, movie. It, yeah, it was General Ross was approached by Tony Stark. I, That's right. Well, they I were think. all yeah. well, they were all tied yeah. together in some yeah, fashion. It, yeah, there was something that that immediately connected all of them, and we just don't have this for right. these movies here. And it's like we're about to have a team up movie supposedly soon with like all of the Avengers on the same scale of Endgame. Yeah, or, we, uh, Infinity War and Endgame. We haven't seen them interact at all yet. And looking at the movie slate, there's no plans to have them no. interact before the big team up movie. And it's like, how can you possibly do that? And the only interaction was Bruce Banner and well, Bruce Banner's actually the one who's who's connected two of them with She Hulk and Shang Chi. That's it. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah, That's you're, it. yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. But <sighs> it's it it's it's disappointing to say the least because because of what they built for themselves. And I think they're trying to, to to recapture that, but going too fast, trying to do too many things. They just they're trying to do way too many things. They're doing what it, DC did in the beginning. It kind of feels like they're actually doing what Star Wars did with like the sequels tr- 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 trilogy of okay, like yeah. you had like like with Star Wars, you had two past tr- trilogies. It was there was like an, an overarching plan, not so much with the oh, original trilogy at first the episode four and then five and six came as like a, mm-hmm. a pairing after that but still it was like all tied in together and then you had the mm-hmm. prequel trilogy where there was that whole plan you got to, to the sequels trilogy and i guess like in their arrogance almost they didn't really like talk and plan out one cohesive story they were like oh it's it, it's it's just Star Wars to take it like one step at a time here and just mm-hmm. do these individual movies but they didn't add add up to something it feels like with marvel they kind of did the same thing where you had the first story arc it was like planned out for the most mm-hmm. part and we got here and it's like okay we can just kind of do individual things and then we'll tie it all up to this but we'll just focus on the individual as mm-hmm. quickly as possible for now and then it's like wait a minute but the thing that star wars is doing which I, thing. the thing that star wars is doing but when we'll get into later when we talk about bad batch and mandalorian mm-hmm. the thing that star wars is doing is you're going back and they're trying to fix it I yes, don't know if yes, you can yes. go back and try to. It's. I think it's almost too late to try to do that with Marvel. Marvel where they are right now in their, in their current plan. 
like i mean you can but to do it you just have to like be like okay the avengers team up movie like that one has to get pushed off for like five years at yeah at yeah. least you have to push it off and you have to give the time for the characters to meet because well, it, like the whole thing with yeah like like with like with captain america and like and like iron man that was a huge thing is, is they had lots of on-screen like on-screen time you get up to see the relationship and then they had a fight and then like you know they had to like go off in their own directions and they only got brought back to, together for the big thing but like if you, you can't even do any part of that with any two new characters for here now because right. they haven't met to be to begin with i mean yeah and it's, imagine it's if this weird is what to the do... first oh sorry yeah no i was just saying it's weird to do a giant team-up movie when you haven't done the first singular team-up movie yeah 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 because e- like like even what i was gonna say here is like if imagine if they were just announcing projects and they announced like with this new cast, they'd be doing a Civil War movie with this new cast, and you'd be like, "How can they do this?" People haven't haven't even at each each other. Mm-hmm. There's no way to have like a Civil War because they they're just a bunch of individuals. They're not like a a team or anything yet at all. It'd be like plucking just random characters from every universe, like uh, plucking a character from DC Invincible. The boys and Marvel plucking four of them fight each other. Why? Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. They're, they're so unrelated. Everything why is Superman so fighting? Uh, unrelated fucking, right now. Why is Superman fighting Captain America in this yeah. movie? They've never yeah. met each other. But anyway, um, <sighs> it's frustrating. That turned into a big rant. I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's how a lot of Marvel fans feel. Right oh now. man, yeah. And, and they're like they they, and I think they're starting to lose people and. Maybe oh, they, they are should absolutely not have. Oh yeah, starting to, to lose people. Like I, I mean, friends who I have who used to go and see all the, all the Marvel films just for fun. One kind of seem overwhelmed right now, and two, they're like, it's just not as good as it used to be. I mean, yeah. I mean, even with like Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantum Mania, and like I won't hark on this too much because I know you, you haven't seen it yet, and like I don't want to spoil or any, well, anything well, or waste our time. Well, I'm a perfect example right there. I have oh, not. I, the last three yeah. movies, I didn't see them first day like I did with the old one, with the other ones. Yeah. Granted, I only saw three of them because I didn't get back into Marvel until 2020. I saw three of them like opening night, but I have not seen the last three opening day. Yeah, yeah. Like the the thing with Ant Man either is like the the thing with the thing with Ant Man. Also, I don't remember where what what I was trying to say there. Sorry. Like is like. Ant Man used to have their own like the Ant Man movies. They had their own distinct vibe. Like Ant Man One, yeah. Ant Man Two had like a very distinct vibe. And Ant Man Three, like I enjoyed seeing Ant Man Three. It got a lot of bad reviews. It's like, oh, am I, am I not going to enjoy it? No, I enjoyed it still. But it does have a very different vibe than the other Ant Man m- movies. And something someone's pointed out that I cannot get out of my head now that someone's pointed it out is all the helmets are nanotech now. There are no more actual helmets. And it's yeah. something so like if you feel like it's it robs a character of some of its uniqueness when as a superhero they act the same way as all of the other superheroes you're seeing on screen and even just like the helmet how like S- Spider Man, uh, not James anymore, Thor, Iron Man, yeah, not anymore. You're you're, you're absolutely right. That's why I loved how 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 Spider Man ended. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, Iron Man, Ant Man, um, just like. Basically, oh, a Black Panther, like all the characters, yeah. Yeah, they're yeah. just going into the same kind of like, oh, no more physical helmets. And it's not as satisfying now. Like it it, right. it feels like they're just – it like when, when the technology gets t- t- to a certain level here, it takes away some of like the stakes of how it feels. Like it doesn't feel as real anymore because you're like, oh – broken arm, like science can fix that. How do I know that? Because he has a helmet. That can like you know like or well if it's Spider Man with with like the actual mask like he breaks his arm you'd be like oh my god he's gonna die <laughs> and like it it just yes, removes broken this, arm equals death <laughs> yeah it, it it just removes so much of like like of the stakes where it's like oh yeah I'm just copy and paste hero with copy and paste like attribute and the yeah. Ant Man movie it was cool to see Ant Man in like a whole different world but it it did feel like it took a lot of a lot away of like the charm of some of the original ant-man films i still yeah. w- you really enjoyed ant-man 3 but like you're gonna watch ant-man 1 and ant-man 2 that has a s- 
certain vibe. Ant Man three doesn't have that same kind of vibe. And <clears throat> yeah, and I when they initially announced it, I thought it was really weird that Ant Man was the one that's going to introduce Kang. Because that just it seems too big for Ant Man. Yeah, and like um, it at least what, or what 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 they had like, set up anyway. Like what, yeah, what, we had one and two, and sure the end of two it set up you know multiverse, but and then yeah. in in not multiverse set up uh. Infinity War. What in, Endgame? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Endgame, and I, and his integral role in, in Endgame was great. Mm-hmm. I'm not taking away, not that that away from the Ant Man character, but it it just seemed too big originally. And again, I don't know how it works yeah. because I'm I've never, I've not seen it yet. Yeah, but like, it kind of worked, but it kind of also felt like this is a lot for just an Ant Man film here. Right, right. Um, so like like they definitely played it up. Like, like just in the scope of the movie, it was more than it should have been in, Uh in my, in my opinion, I was expecting kind of more of a light introduction and it was like, no, it's like, it's like Ant-Man against Kang here. I'm like, this is a lot. Yeah. So anyway, (laughs) Mm -hmm. Uh, back to news, Kevin Feige announced that Deadpool 3 was the first R-rated MCU film that kind of just kind of goes back into what we were saying. Uh, that's another movie that then said like, "Hey, we're making it." Yeah, wait a minute. Oh my god, there's so much stuff with movies, and it doesn't and fit into anything they're doing. Thunderbolts. I've seen oh, so much that. with all of that, and it and it looks like from what I've like, there's a plot synopsis that keeps coming around online. I can't find it backed up. Like I completely forgot about the anywhere movie. or show whatever. like official. But what the Thunderbolts movie plot outline that I've seen go around says is that the statue or not the statue the celestial corpse that appeared at out of the very end of the eternals where it was trying to hatch but then didn't oh god did, did i forgot about hatch. that movie too jesus Christ. yeah right there's so, so much going on <laughs> so what the plot of that movie says is, is like that countries found some interesting metal and the statue they've dubbed it adam anium or whatever Ooh. the wolverine metal is like that's what they're calling it's like oh it's like that metal and it's like a race between like the country powers to get to it and it's like they're all just doing like illegal things to do it and captain america has to be the one to stand in and say like hey stop which is super cool but it's like wait is this for captain america or the thunderbolts oh wait wait okay wait hold on which which wait which plot synopsis is this wait hold on hold on (laughs) is this new world order or is this thunderbolts that i've seen no i believe it is Thunderbolts and Captain America is going to have a role in that movie too, and that the Thunderbolts are going to be what has to like stop the exploitation by like. But it's 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 like super weird. But like you know that aside, I don't know if it's real or not. The only thing I like about that is it brings up the fact that there's a giant celestial corpse in the ocean, <laughs> in the ocean. which <laughs> no one has, has has either has has touched. And it's like I think it was mentioned you, briefly in like a little ignore. line in Spider Man. No, it was mentioned in a, in a line in a. Sh- he Hulk. It was oh, they right, were looking right, at like right. a news thing, and it was mm-hmm. like a column on the side, which is like, like at least She Hulk touched it. I'm grateful for that. But it's like, it's, it's like that's how standalone these movies feel. Is like something that big and major can happen, and it's I mean, not mentioned at the at the very end, end of Eternals. You know, the giant dude appeared outside the sky, and he snatched up three of the Eternals, and then like Bless. took off. And it's like nobody's talked about that. What? Okay, so let's 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 figure this out. So okay. the Eternals, Shang Chi, um, a Moon Knight. <laughs> what uh? What else? She Hulk. Oh, and then they also finally confirmed that Shang Chi, who is like officially in the works here, and it's like okay, cool, but when are we gonna get that? Before we get for the what? Avengers movie? What? Like, like a. Sh- Hung Chi. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They've officially like, confirmed it's in the works, but it's like, what's gonna happen with that character? That's six movies that have nothing to do with the multiverse. There's six projects that have nothing to do with the multiverse saga. What are they? Yeah, and Black Panther I've, two. Uh, and, uh, uh, oh my God, what's it called? A Werewolf by Night. What are these? Do what are they? And I do think Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Hung Chi and Miss Marvel are gonna tie in with Kang somehow here because someone pointed out hey like the inscriptions on shang chi's oh, rings yeah, yeah, yeah. and miss marvel's bangles and kang stuff is all is like all looks the same but like 
Okay, and also why is like I like I know why Kang is like in is uh, like in the multiverse saga and, and like all that, but it just they're doing way too much all at once, uh, and it's kind of I exhausting. can see why your friend one of your friends feels overwhelmed because like there's so much going on, but none of it connects to yeah, anything, and it's it just makes you not want to watch the movies because it's like you're kind of watching them and be like, okay, what's this setting up, and yeah. then it it draws too much in from. The past here, like Doctor Strange, which you cannot watch without having seen uh on the vision here. Which we were hoping or like and, it's all when just we, yeah. set up stuff and it's not satisfying. Yeah, and I remember early on in this podcast when we had Reese on, we were we were talking about Wand WandaVision, and we we're just like, Oh, there's there's no way they're gonna make it to the way you have to watch these shows in order to enjoy the movies. And they've Very just wrong. completely take that away. Very um wrong. yeah. So <laughs> yeah, um and yeah, and it and like and it makes me feel because like for uh for the Marvels at first I was, I was like okay they're obviously you know they'll do like 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 you won't have to see Miss Marvel it'll help because you'll know the character but you won't have to now I'm like oh no you're gonna have to because look what they did for Doctor Strange too yeah yeah so um, last piece of news we're gonna change over to the DC universe uh, on Valentine's Day Lady Gaga, Lady Gaga posted an image from the new Joker movie. Picture mm. of Lady Gaga's character face to face with the Joker, smudged makeup, and they both seem to be bleeding. Not much to gain from it, but uh, that movie also exists, Joker too. Yep, has nothing to do with the rest of the DC EU that was announced recently. Nope, but it's fun. Hopefully, yep. So, cool. Um, now let's get. So, <clears throat> as I stated previously, we missed seven episodes of the Bad yes. Batch. Can we do the Mandalorian first? Because I have a we lot. We can do of the Mandalorian that, first. That yes, I want to churn out right yes, here. Yes, we'll do the it'll... Mandalorian first, then we'll we'll briefly go over the seven episodes. Like nothing. Yeah, too insane. Because my first note about the Mandalorian, this is right in line with all of my Marvel comics. Oh, I yeah. really, I really, really, in, uh, I really enjoyed the first episode of, of Mandalorian. I thought it was fantastic. I Lots of things yeah. I liked. One thing that pissed me off, and I stayed pissed off throughout the entire episode, like genuinely mad, is what happened with the book of Boba Fett. They mention one thing of, from it in like the recap, and they don't touch it at all besides that. It starts okay. and Grogu is there. And if you didn't see the book of Boba Fett, no explanation. And that pissed me off. I was like, how do you expect your audience to just – have watched that. Like, of course, all Star Wars fans will. Of course. Of, but you, but, but you, see, have all, you have all Star Wars fans suckered into your little game. But just Mandalorian fans. Which there are a lot of that have just watched The Mandalorian. Yeah, there are tons. Like, it's like, I dad has, has always, like, kind of like Star Wars. He's always, like, done Star Wars stuff. But, like, he just likes Star Wars because it's, like, because he just likes, you know, like, like, he saw it when... when when it first came out back yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, whenever. And he's like, yeah, it's cool. Like I'll talk to him about like some of the like specific, you know, like plot things. Like, I don't really remember what you're talking about there. He like, I mean, he knows all the big plot points. He's seen all the movies, but like you try to like connect like the background stuff for him. He's, he's like, he's like, eh, I don't know about all of yeah. that. He's but a casual Star Wars fan. And that's fine. Yeah. 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 That's fine. With Mandalorian. He loves the Mandalorian, but he, he hasn't watched like all of the other stuff. Like I like, he watched the last three episodes of, of Boba Fett because I was like, "Hey, Dad, let's just watch this." Because I feel like he might have to, and he's like, "All right, sure." And then I was the Mandalorian, and, and like he loved all that. But like, he's not going out of his way to consume all source material. He only watched Book of Boba Fett because I said, "Hey, you should," because I knew how much Mando it had. And even right. then, I was like, "Only watched the last three episodes." And he's like, "Okay, that sounds good." But like. If I hadn't told him that, and if he had gone to start watching season three, he wouldn't have known. It's like, well, what the and hell is Grogu doing here? It's not like it tells you on screen, hey, you have to watch this. I was at least expecting, uh, hey, previously on The Mandalorian and on the book of Boba Fett. So a Star Wars fan would know like, oh, I have, or, sorry, a Mando fan would know, hey, I have to go and watch that. But no, they just say previously on The Mandalorian, have a couple scenes from Mando. One scene not from Mando, where is it from? I guess you missed something, you sucker. And then they skip over <laughs> that completely. Grogu is there. And then when a character on screen kind of asks, like, oh, where did he come from? Uh, like, Mando basically goes, long story, not going to tell you. And then that's that. And it's like, they're really not going to address this whatsoever. No. 
is homework. No, and see, they assigned homework, and that pisses me <laughs> off. I like, like, I got so mad when I saw that. No matter how cool the rest of the episode was, it's like that stuck with me the entire time. Is why is Grogu there to a casual Star Wars fan? Well, and that was what I put something I put in my notes. It said, uh, it's it's a it dealt with past storylines beautifully, except Grogu being back. People who didn't watch the book of Boba Fett, I'm sure, are confused. Yeah, that was the one thing. And I was like, that is just, I feel like that was Star Wars being intentionally disrespectful to casual fans. And that pissed me off. Probably. You're probably yeah. not wrong. Um, but, uh, and a little caveat apparently, John Favreau came out and said that the, there's a two year gap between season two and three. Oh. All right. So I did see that. And then you would never know, though. I didn't well, know until this no, morning. Because. Well, I actually went and looked at the article that that quote was like was supposedly from, and they made yeah. that the most clickbaity title as possible. Oh, because I just I is, just saw this online on a video. Yeah, I yeah like I saw it too, and I was like, that cannot be right. Is the article because that's what the article title claims? And I went and read the quote, and the actual quote was he was saying is like there were two years between when the shows aired on Disney Plus. That's basically all he was saying was just that. But then. Okay. He also said, like, he also said, like, 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 the timeline is longer than like most people think, but like, he never actually said it was like actually two years. He said there were two years between the show was aired. He's talking about the timeline being like a bit closer to that than what people think. I like, like, so it's been like I, two years since the beginning of the sh- when the first show first see, started in boat in canon, I guess. Yeah, like. Okay, I have no that idea makes the, more sense. I have no idea what the timeline actually is. I just know because I saw it's like it cannot be two years. That is insane to me, especially because like what would Boba Fett have been doing this entire time? Like, what did because like and like if it is that long, how how can you tell that from the show? You can't. There's no no. That, way. That's what I mean. I didn't find that out to this point. Okay, so that's good to know yeah. that that was yeah. just someone on the video that I watched. Someone missed, never read the article. Yeah, but they, I mean. I don't blame them because the title of the article clearly said like the title. I don't know if you saw the actual article was, no, was called, didn't. but it, but the article was was essentially called like John Favreau confirms there is two years between X of it and X of it, which is just quotably false if you read the actual <laughs> article. But the article title just claims that. So clickbait. Oh. Um. Anyway, so the actual episode itself yes. was awesome. I think it did mm-hmm. everything a first episode of a season is supposed to do. It set Let up storylines. Actually... Yeah. And it had the right amount of Easter eggs. I, one thing that I absolutely loved, I I saw this and I, and I let out like an audible noise from my mouth, like a gasp, like an, like an audible gasp. And I think I know where you're going. And Lauren did too, because we had both just finished Star Wars Rebels Rebels. very recently here and seeing the silhouettes of the Mm Pergils in the hyperspace lanes, I lost my mind. I was like, that is, oh my God. It, cause what I honestly think I was I, I was I was thinking about it during the show and afterwards some and I was like I bet this was an on screen animation test for the Ahsoka show because there is no way they don't yeah. have a role in the Ahsoka show and I bet this was like an animation test they wanted to include and it, they looked so cool yeah it was really I cool I love seeing those things mm-hmm. I did not pay that much attention I didn't find out what that was until afterwards because I was oh, it was what? like five in the morning when I watched it. okay okay that's so totally I was like fair. I was like watching it and I was like oh that's interesting I wonder what that is and then later on I was like oh those are purgles yeah I loved it I loved an audible gasp and I have never felt as big of a nerd as I did in that <laughs> moment knowing what those things were and being so excited about just seeing their silhouettes I like like I've done nerdy stuff before, me on an audible gasp at the sight of P- Pergil live action silhouettes, the most nerdy thing I've ever done. But <laughs> well, I'm so and, pumped for that. And it's funny because, and I know you guys just recently, I know you recently rewatched it, but mm-hmm. going into season, and Mando season two, you didn't know anything. I don't think about Rebels, right? Um, because I, I remember I had to convince you to watch Rebels. It yeah, took me a long I, time to do it. I don't think I. Saw saw rebels before season two wait oh no you're right because ahsoka was in season two right yeah so yeah no it was after season two because i remember we were talking about it and i mentioned all these things from rebels and Mm -hmm. you just were like cool i guess i don't know and then you finally watched it Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. best decision i've ever made it's such a good show and there's Mm -hmm. so much that they're going to be referencing here in the next couple years yeah yeah um oh yeah with star wars Mm -hmm. um but like but like because probably like like 
why I felt like as big of a nerd as I did is like it was uh, myself and Lauren, who are both huge into Star Wars. It was um, my roommate and his girlfriend who were watching it as well, who are also huge into Star Wars. And then uh, my other roommate and her boyfriend who were there as well. And like her boyfriend was huge into Star Wars. She was not. <laughs> so it was five of us huge into Star Wars, know all the Easter eggs, gasping at everything. And her, who just loves <laughs> Pedro Pascal, who was like, what are you guys talking about? Like when the silhouettes came on and I audibly gasped and we were all talking about it. I mean, I was, I was like, she, I was like, this is what Star Wars nerds look like to like actual people there. <laughs> just like the most mundane thing on screen and everybody oh, cool freaking whales. out. <laughs> yeah. Oh, cool whales. <gasps> oh my God. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Um, like, well, and that, that's how I felt with Black Crescenton when he made his appearance in Book of Boba Fett. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I know, I know, because you're not that into the comics like I am. Because I remember I saw him on, I was like, oh my God, it's Black Crescent. And then I came and talk, talked about it in the podcast. You're like, yeah, cool. I have no idea who that is. <laughs> yep, <laughs> like, oh, yep. he's from the comics. I'm like, oh, man. And I like how there's different levels of, of, of all this, too, of the Star mm -hmm. Wars fandom. Um, yeah, but anyway, yeah, like I, I, it is so weird. I, I will say it is so weird. Like having the last door show we got was Andor, and now we have the like the Mandalorian because they they are two phenomenal Star Wars shows on mm -hmm. opposite sides of the spectrum in yeah. entirely. Like one show, like like Andor is phenomenal, and there's like hardly any like fan references or fan service in there's the show. Barely any at Star all. Wars. Just, <laughs> yeah, like it's, it's it's just phenomenal by itself. And you made a which is phenomenal, but there is like Plenty Star Wars. everything <laughs> Star Wars crammed into that show. So Lots it's so funny Star to see yeah. two great shows opposite ends of the spectrum. Yeah. Um so but anyway, so this show it picks up right after the the, the book of Boba Fett. Um well I and think. also we are saying Right after, apparently, we have no idea what the timeline yeah, actually is. So who who knows? It takes place it at looks some point like it, in time. <laughs> yeah, it looks like it picks up pretty shortly after. I thought it was starting with a f flashback. I'll be real honest. Everyone I was uh -huh. watching it with did too because we were like, "Oh, this is a flashback to Andalore. This is when Din Jaren first. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, me too, me too. Became me too. Mandalorian. Yeah, I remember that. And then he shows up, and it's like, what is going on? And yeah. it's like, dude, I forgot so, about yeah. that part. You're right. Yeah, yeah. That gotcha. threw me I'd off. Forgotten. That, that yeah, threw yeah. me for a major loop. That CG was incredible. Of that gigantic yeah. alligator, that was awesome. It was weird that when there were guts wild. everywhere, but that was that was something. Yeah. Um. I so when <sighs> they when she when I first saw that the helmet they were making, I thought it was for Grogu. I thought they were yeah, getting like, Grogu a helmet. Yeah. Like, oh like, my god, Grogu's getting the helmet. And then yeah, it was just some kid. Yeah, it was kind of a weird start to the show, but also kind of a cool start. But also, I was still expecting them to go into why Grogu was with him. And then he just pops up his head when Din Djarin lands his ship. Mm -hmm. After Din Djarin, like, saves the day, after they were trying to, like, baptize th this kid in a monster-infested lake. So, mm -hmm. just... Yeah, it was strange. But it was good. It was, like it was, a, it was a weird start. It was a cool start, I will absolutely mm -hmm. say that. But it was just weird. And we got some background on the on the Mandalorian cult, as as yeah. uh, Bo Katan likes to call them. Yes. Um. So that was that was interesting. Um. And then he goes back to where it all the whole show started, and the whole place is just different. And they yeah. have money. They he's turned the 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 I don't remember the guy's name. He's turned it into like a real nice, respectable port. Yeah. Everything's going great. The bar is a school. Everyone likes when bars turns into schools, except those especially those pirates. Especially those pirates. Those pirates love that it was a school. Now <laughs> they had this statue of IG Eleven, right? It was yeah, I think his so. name there. Mm -hmm. That was cool. Yeah, it was. It was so weird to see that in the flashback. That was the thing that bugged me is how, is how they included that in like the that in like the in like the recap thing where they were like previously yeah. on the Mandalorian. They included the IG Eleven thing, but not why. Jaren. Jaren. But yeah, they had that and they had the statue and I was like, okay, cool. And you know what happened with that. Well, later on, we can go more with what happened with that. At the end of the on, episode, but... they should have just like, like in the, after the end credits, they should have just uh, uh, put this re, re, uh, 
put the scene in where Poe Dameron says somehow. Remember we talked about it on the last episode. Somehow Grogu has returned. Yeah, they just do that, but somehow Grogu's returned. Oh man! Just, put, yeah. just like put, put the scene and just like put a bad voice over over Pal- Palpatine. Yeah, put Grogu. Yeah, yeah, like somehow Grogu has returned. <laughs> <laughs> um. So yeah, so he comes back. They they they. I like the way they explained away. Carino, whatever her first name is. Yes, that was that was funny. Yeah, a lot of people did it so quickly because I remember seeing before that like the writers' room was trying to figure out if they should explain her his appearance or not, mm-hmm. and they went back and forth about it. I was like, okay, I was like, okay, so if they do it, it'll be a big deal in a, the episode, huh? And it was just like one line just to casually explain. Like, it, oh but, yeah, like, she just made me. That did not feel out of place at all. That felt no. so natural in the episode. I was I was almost like, why would you not include this? Why was it such a huge debate? Like that felt the most yeah. in place line of all time. Yeah. So that was that was an interesting tidbit there. And then they had that standoff with the pirates. Mando did his Mando thing. And yep. then uh it was a short episode. I was surprised when I turned it on. It's yeah. 37 minutes. Yes. Yes. Same. Out of that. And I, I was like, like that feels like kind of like an average length for like the middle episodes, but for mm-hmm. like start and end, they're usually like a bit closer to like to an hour. I feel, I don't mm-hmm. remember exactly. I didn't go back and look, but like, it's like, that but, feels like a short start, but, but it, it worked. I don't think it needed to be longer or shorter. I thought it was, no, it was good. Good length. Um, yeah. So yeah. Um, uh, and then once I G a Yes. 11 alive. That's what came out as like the thing, mm-hmm. which is c- cool. He has trust in one droid now and exactly one. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, yeah. So he just needs to get a memory circuit for the droid because it has defaulted yes. to its original programming pro- programming and they need to copy all the old information off, put it on a new memory drive and put that in his head. So mm-hmm. he is the same IG. Oh, 11 which mm-hmm. is kind of like a really cursed thing for droids like if i died in like an epic sex self-sacrificing explosion way and then was all of a sudden just alive again i would be freaking out two for one <laughs> memories or not but like i'm really <laughs> curious what will happen when he's actually brought back with yeah. his memories if if it'll be like okay cool yeah or if it'll be like why am i not exploded right right and so and there's just, and there's your and there's two major storylines they set up Right there in yeah. the in the in the episode, yep. and then so after that he goes and he finds Bo Katan. Well, first let's let's talk about the pirate thing. How they basically added oh, okay. space Blackbeard uh, <laughs> to uh the oh yeah, to the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. giant moss beard hanging off that guy's face. Yep, I'm excited right. to see where that storyline goes because Mando has never really gone up against like an organization like this before. He's fought mm-hmm. like like the like the M empire remnants remnants yeah. and all that but it never like a gang of space pirates so <laughs> yeah very and there's, interesting there's storyline number three yes and then and then I he abs- went oh I, I will say absolutely absolute yeah. shout out to him for using the speed thing so often because i was a little scared <laughs> there it was gonna become like okay cool he can do this but there's always gonna be some convenient plot reason that he won't but no uh-huh. he's using it to get out of everything which is what you should be using that for like that's mm-hmm. why your ship has that yeah and i thought the space battle was cool uh we've not yeah. seen a lot oh, yeah. of space battles in star wars lately yeah like, uh, like even in the bad batch which is especially weird. with the mandalorian i don't feel like we've ever had like a uh, i think cool we had a space short, battle at all i think a short one and maybe like season one or two and that may have been Probably like so. not in space that it may have just been on in, in on land yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like but, uh, in the air on land. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um Yep. And then So that was cool. Then he went to see uh Then he went to see Bo Katan, who is Can you talk about how Howdy, which how, is, seems wrong for her. Yeah, let's but can you talk about how funny his entrance was almost where Bo Katan is not expecting anyone as no. as far as, as I can tell. He walks in this castle and there's just one hallway and she's just chilling on the throne at the end of the hallway, not expecting anyone, anybody. Mm-hmm. And some of that just image was so funny to me. It's like, it's like did she just sit there it's just all, all day, day and just pout. like, n- just not doing anything, just on her throne in this like, big empty hallway? Like well, that was... Right, what, and she explained, so she's like, me. ever since I lost the Darksaber, no one wants to be here. So they just left. Yeah. They don't respect her anymore. They don't give a yeah. shit. And and she, and so he want and he needs help from other Mandalorians. And he's he's like, you got the dark saber. He's like, yeah. He's like, all right, they'll listen to you. 
Sweet. And yeah. she's just sitting there. It just seems she so out of character out. for me, yeah. for Bo Katan. She's just never been like that. Yeah. I don't know. I, I that mean, wasn't my favorite Bo Katan moment. I'm, I'm, I mean, to be fair, like it kind of made sense in, in my mind. It's it's like she had kind of devoted everything to this one thing and now she's kind of lost it 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 all. It's it's like she's been trying for years. Decades. It's it's got it's gotta have been. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. I mean that goes back to the end of the original trilogy. Mm-hmm. And this is after mm-hmm. the or no, sorry, end of the prequel trilogy. And this is after the like this is like midway between the the sequels and the, and the yeah, yeah, originals. Yeah. So yeah, so um, I mean, it, it's been a long battle part, and this is supposed to be like the final moment where she got everything, and then it just backfired in her face away. Com- yeah. completely. So, yeah, because now Din Djarin has it. So, yep. Oops. Um. Yeah. But she did expl- She did mention the uh, the cult she was a part of in the Clone Wars. Remember, that was against the teen. I don't remember what they were called. The. Do I remember that? Yeah, remember in Clone Wars, they were they're no, on the moon. I I don't remember what she talked about. In, oh well, she in, just in ba- she basically talked about how the the divisions between the clans ruined Mandalore. Oh, and Mandalorian yeah. culture, and she mm-hmm. and she mentioned the clan that she was part of. Oh, during uh, the whole hmm. the whole reason there was even a civil war, Mandalorian oh, civil war. Weird. So yeah. that or in the in the uh, Clone Wars. So that, that I thought yeah. it was a neat Easter egg there. Um. So yeah. Um. And then that's kind of where we left, I think. Yeah, I so, think so. And there's another. There's four storylines for you. Yep. And so I'm going to conquer it all in the next seven episodes. Yeah, it, it looks very promising. Like the Mandalorian has always been a great show, in my opinion, mm-hmm. except for the fact that Grogu is back, yeah. and they won't talk about why. <laughs> why did they do that? Why did they make that decision for Book of Boba Fett? Uh, that's that's funny. so bizarre. Yeah. Like. If you watch straight from season two to season three, mm-hmm. and like that's what drives me crazy about just stuff like this. It's like you're gonna be so confused. It's I mean, even with like all of the CW shows, mm-hmm. like Arrow, Flash, Legends of Tomorrow. I don't know if like you fully know how that all worked, but they would have nope. crossovers mm. and they would have Depending on how many shows were involved, they would have three part crossovers, four part crossovers, two part crossovers, five part crossovers. And for each one, each show, like, you know, they all air on different nights. So one episode of the crossover would be in, like, in each show. So you have, like, the Flash episode of the crossover and so on and so on. But, like, so to watch it live was super easy. You would just tune in each, each night to stream it. You know, you're watching Flash. You know, episode eighteen. You got episode nineteen. You are three parts into a crossover. You have not seen the f- first two parts to. Mm-hmm. So, if you actually want to see what happens, you have to go and find where to watch the other shows on streaming. Watch that episode and then come back. Watch that one. Watch the conclusions. Then jump back to the show. And it's like casual fans won't know how to to do that. Right. And the same and thing with, with streaming The Mandalorian. Like, if you're watching it live and you know what happens in the book of Boba Fett, you can go in and watch that episode and then wait two years and have The Mandalorian this season three air. But if if you're just, like, if, if like, in a year someone recommends The Mandalorian to you and you just want to go and binge you the show, binge watch it. you're going to jump from, from the finale of two to the start of three, and you're going to be like, did I – what happened? <laughs> what did I miss? Yeah. yeah. Well, so especially I, when you watch the recap and there's that even happened with the flash with the flashes in this last season now. So I've been watching mm-hmm. and there was a flashback like <laughs> like nice. like they all have flashbacks occasionally like characters well. And there was like three flashbacks in this last episode. And one of them I did not recognize at all. <laughs> and I was like, OK, did I miss an episode? And with me, even though I know it's all contained in you know, one series eight seasons i'm not gonna be able to go back and find where this flashback was from i tried googling it that <laughs> didn't work i'm out of luck is there something i'm supposed to know here yeah and here it's like it's like there have been 16 episodes before this point someone who binges all of them they're like i did not miss that scene because i would remember that scene they're not gonna know where to go if they look yeah. it up it'll be easy easy enough but oh my god yeah yeah and i think that goes back to what you were saying about marvel and if you didn't see the, this, this, and this show, you're not going to know what's happened in this movie, right? Yeah. So, yeah, but like, I think like how story that should always be, in my opinion, is like, hey, if you have seen it, you'll be 
rewarded as a viewer for having seen it. Yep. But if you haven't, you shouldn't be punished for that. And I feel yeah. like a, a lot of what Marvel, DC, and Source have been doing is they've been punishing you for not having watched specific other stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's like, cut that out. <laughs> cut that out, guys. Damn it, I just want to watch casually. Let me do it. <laughs> yeah. Comics should um, be fun, not stressful. So, all right. So now the bad... Are, is that everything you want to say on The Mandalorian? I think so, yeah. I am looking forward to where it's going. I wish they would have done some things. Oh, also, I will say that's one thing that does concern me about the Ahsoka show because there was some quote online from some director or some producer or whatever saying, like, they're trying to structure the, like, releases, like, timeline to make sure Ahsoka lines up with where it needs to line up in, like, The Mandalorian and, like, all that. And the reaction I had, the reaction I've, I've, I've seen online is, please do not do to Ahsoka what you did with the book of of Boba Fett. If it ends up becoming like Mandalorian season 3.5, it's like, first of all, Ahsoka, we know what its plot is going to be already. It's going to need all the time in the world to be able to resolve that. Well, don't try to cram the Mandalorian back in there too. Why does he have to be in every show? Yeah. But uh, so, yeah. yeah. Well, and don't, we and, don't, and don't cram other people into the Mandalorian. Which yeah. they haven't, which they've done a really yeah. good job of not doing that. And they introduced Luke Skywalker, sure. They introduced Ahsoka, sure. But otherwise... But, but, yeah, but that was all one-offs and it, it was worked. fine. And it worked, yeah. yeah. It did not ruin the story in any way. No. Un unlike what they did with the Book them. of Boba Fett, where they turned the Book of Boba Fett into Star Wars the show. Yeah. <laughs> there were many Star Wars in that in the Book of Boba Fett. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, but Bad I do batch. think that's all my thoughts. Yeah. Bad Batch so, time, seven I episodes. I don't know if Let I me... really want to go through all these seven episodes. No, I, I don't either. I just want to talk about the highlights from each of them. Yeah, so Bad Batch episode five was... Episode, we're, we haven't done anything since, since episode four. That was the last mm -hmm. episode we covered. Yep. <laughs> Wait, so that means, because they're on 12 now. So they're on 11. That, that, oh, oh, well, they're the, only last, the most 11? recent one was 11. So yes, yeah, so oh, I guess okay. the next one was 12. Oh, okay, yeah. I was thinking the wrong way then. I don't yeah. don't know what this one is about. I, I need to pull enough. up. I need to pull up these on my phone to be able to look through. Oh, yeah, episode I'm pull, I'm five. Up Plus. Oh, episode five was kind of cool. It was it was kind of these this weird like one off episodes. That much has done a lot of just one off standalone episodes, which is cool. But like, well, but I mean, I like more of the like arc things. Yeah, but I mean, the Clone Wars did that almost, as well. And so do Rebels. Every show's got to do that. Like, not everything can yeah, be yeah. this intense arc. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, again, is totally fine with that. That was the one where they found a treasure map, and they went to look for treasure. Oh, that's season one. Yeah. And uh, the cool thing about that was, like, when some... Was when the ancient, like, machine thing activated, and it was, like, a giant, like, robot thing, the likes right. of which yeah, we yeah, haven't yeah. really seen in Star Wars before. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that's cool. I had written down um, that that giant robot kind of looked like Dialga from Pokemon. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it was just cool. Well, I, I wish they'd done more with that. Honestly, or like structured it in a different way. It was kind of weird where it, it felt it felt like the Bad Batch were like making a test appearance on some other kind of Star Wars show, mm -hmm. like some kind of animated treasure hunting Star Wars show, because they weren't really like the driving figures in the narrative. They were just kind of right. there. Right. But like, it was cool to see. Yeah, and um, I I think I think it was really cool because we got a, we got some different kind of lore. We got some bounty hunter and pirate lore, mm -hmm. which we don't get a lot of in Star Wars. We get more no. Jedi and Sith lore. So I yeah. thought that was a really interesting part of this. Um, yeah. I will say the animation in this show, and it and it blows me away every week. It's amazing. Yeah, and it keeps getting better. Yeah, the, and the, the visually the really quality good. of this show is really good. Yeah, uh, the, the, the content wise has been really good too, but especially visually, it's just been excellent. Right? Yes, yes, yes. Um, the next episode, episode six was, was the Wookiee. Yes, Jedi, that was. Which I believe cool. we saw in Clone Wars, correct? That's the same one. Maybe I do remember there was a Wookiee with, like yeah, youngling Jedi, but I honestly with Ahsoka couldn't I tell you. An Ahsoka yeah. storyline. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure. The thing that kind of bugged me of this about this episode, I, I still don't know where they're going with Omega. That now in the last episode, we've kind of gotten a thing where they're building up to like Omega as a clone, but it's like you know the the the, the Bad Batch. Each of them has like a unique thing that makes 
them strong mm -hmm. with Omega. We hadn't really established what that is yet or like why she was kind of cloned like the way she was or why she's really like one of the, like the, the bad batch here. Mm -hmm. What, you know, a lot of people had speculated early on, which I kind of still hope is true. Cause I, I think that would be cool is if she was a clone who has the, the force sensitivity. Force. Yeah. 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 Like force sensitivity and all that. So when they introduced this Jedi character, I was like, maybe this is how Omega starts to figure out some things about herself, her own force sensitivity, if this is the direction they've chosen to go. Interesting, but yeah. all it did, because like, they talk about this episode where like the Wookiee's kind of talking about how like he interacts with things and how and Omega's talking about it. And like Omega's like, yeah, I cannot do this at all. I don't understand it. Like he taught me how to meditate. This is another episode, I think, where she's like, he taught me how to how to oh yeah, yeah, yeah meditate yeah. i don't get anything from that at 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 all not like he does what's whatsoever i just do it because you know mm -hmm. uh but it's like okay so they're basically doing everything they can to confirm she is not force sensitive at all mm -hmm. which is fine you know i'm not mad about that i'm interested to see the direction like the story goes but like it's like they have that and it's but they're still being so mysterious about her kind of as a clone in my mind maybe in actuality they're not trying to be mysterious maybe it's just like oh she isn't really that special as a clone she's special for other reasons here but uh yeah it, it was a really interesting episode really interesting to see like jedi stuff happening again really interesting mm -hmm. to see what's going on on the wookie home world and, yeah, and, and we like got all some that. wookie lore as well um yeah about, yeah, yeah you know the way they look at this they see trees on yep. Kashyyyk. um yep. uh and, and just quickly a little background about the the, the reason they had trandoshans hunting wookies um that that's that so that's, was so the empire black had... chris Sisanton. that was a lot of what his backstory right yes, you know that kind yes, of yes. His? yeah and so basically Trandoshans, they they just hunt wookies that's just something they did regardless mm -hmm. um for they do it for sport there's particularly in in the in the bounty hunter comics um there's a Trandoshan bounty hunter who's uh his name is bosk and he's known as the wookie killer that's his nickname. i know him right he's yes he was, he was in, in clone wars right too yes i was think he in so clone wars? Mm -hmm. okay yeah, yeah um but we we i think this is like one of the first time we've actually seen them physically hunting them um even if it's for the empire and as some of us know uh the empire enslaved the entire planet of kashik um and just all of wookie kind which explains why yeah. we found which is how han found chewy yep solo mm -hmm. um but so it's interesting that the, that the empire enlisted the Trandoshans to hunt Wookies, um, considering yeah. their uh, the empire is kind of racist towards other other. Yeah, uh, yeah. So also, Do you I have any other thoughts? Chew oh, yeah, sorry. I didn't know yeah. that Chewbacca's crossbow was of Wookie design. I did oh. not realize that. That was kind of confirmed in this because I don't think I've seen anyone Sweet. else with a crossbow. Um, yeah. Now. Oh, yeah. my last thing was that okay. I, that was probably my at the time that was my favorite episode since the oh, premiere. Oh, sweet! And back in 2021, my favorite episode since the premiere, hands down, the next episode, the season two, conspiracy. episode seven. Yes. I love the Clone Conspiracy. That That's my favorite insane. one. It did not have the Bad Batch at all. No, which, I mean it, it had Rex. Which, yeah, yeah. I yeah. guess he's now technically part of the Bad Batch. Yeah. By way of he's not a good clone, <laughs> but <laughs> but yeah, I but, love this episode. This is I think this was hands down um like my favorite because you got to see more of how it was in the Senate, how Coruscant is uh, after the Empire, how the clones are really being treated after the the Empire here. So 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 much. I it, like because of that, it actually connects I, to Andor. Yeah and yeah yeah mm -hmm. like. Like, I th I thought this was almost the perfect Bad Batch episode, mm -hmm. and it didn't have the Bad Batch at all. So not sure what that really means for what I'm looking for in this show here. It but did. It, it was, was part of an arc but, though. It was a two episode but it was arc cool. with the Bad yes, Batch. Yes, yes, yes. So yes. they were in the second part of the arc, which yep. is episode eight. Yep. But yeah, I it was like this episode intense. I, I like this episode more even. It, it, it reminded me almost of like what was the Clone. It, but like, it reminded me of Andor a little bit. It reminded me of, of, of the Clone Wars standpoint. arc, I think, where Fives found out about Orders 66. Oh, yeah, that's right. And yeah, it was like that, that was, was like super that whole style dark. Arc. Yeah, 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 yeah. I need to go back and rewatch that arc still because I remember I really I love that arc. And I, I've only seen it once and it's been forever here. But mm -hmm. uh, 
So yeah, but like I I I love this episode. Yeah, it I mean, was and, phenomenal. And I'll tie, and like, I'll tie eight we got the Emperor's well. appearance. I don't remember. It was, it, was, yep. it was the next episode, I think. No, we it was got the, the next Emperor's. Episode. We got the Emperor's appearance. Yeah, appearance. It was phenomenal. So they they basically so in this episode they found out or the the one senator found out that who I believe we've seen before in the Clone Wars, but I don't remember. I don't remember. Yeah. Um, they found out that uh, Rampart Admiral Rampart destroyed the cloning facility, which everyone mm-hmm. thought it was some freak storm. And then some people were like, well, actually it doesn't make any sense because that's like – it's a submersive like city. Yeah. Like, that should not happen. Yeah, it's built um, to survive this. So. Right, because that's what the planet is. It should be built to survive that. Yeah. Um. So we got a lot of that. And then in the next episode, episode eight, the Bad Batch were enlisted to basically get that information from the Rampart's ship. And yeah. they proved yeah. it right. And yep. then – it backfired on them, which is what yeah. I, which I think is what very really cool. made the episode good because yeah, very cool. Uh, a lot of times we're used to just oh, good guys always win, but Palpatine mm-hmm. is so like he's always eighteen steps ahead of you. He, he's so ahead always. of the curve here, and he took and he knew that they were going to do that and find out that that happened. He got Rampart arrested, and still was able to push his agenda forward. On yeah, did commissioning the clones. Yeah. And I thought Genius. that was a masterful job for yeah. those two episodes. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they they have a clone I love assassins that now That's... that yeah are that was wild clones right that that are going against uh, the empire yeah and that will kill themselves and they will not cap- get themselves captured and they kill themselves mm-hmm. so that that doesn't yeah. happen it was a it was yeah. a dark set of episodes but it was mm-hmm. they were so good. Probably mm-hmm. some of the Phenomenal. best Bad Batch episodes we've gotten. Yeah. Some of the best and animated then, stuff we've gotten since season seven of the Clone Wars. Yeah. And then Echo decided to leave the Bad Batch and stay with right. Rex and do his whole mission, which I, th- I, th- I thought was a bold choice. I was not expecting that at all. Mm-hmm. And I'm looking forward to where this goes because, like, you know, Echo kind of has to come back at some point. There's no reason to write him off as a character because right. there's only one voice actor who's voicing all these dudes so it's so it's not like oh this <laughs> guy can't be a voice actor now so whatever it's like he's 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 gonna come back we know it so like right. somehow these arcs are gonna loop back around we kind of saw part of that in the most recent mm-hmm. episode here yeah. but uh yeah i'm i it was such a bold choice like, I was like, I was like okay this show is really about to to go places now i think it's finally found its footing yeah, yeah, Whereas yeah. Season one, it was kind of just feeling itself out. Like season one of Clone Wars, it's kind of feeling yep. itself out. And but now it's found of its... Rebels. And yes. season yes. one of Rebels is as as well, yeah. And it felt itself out. Now it knows where it wants to go, and it's got its feet in the ground, and it's yep, yep. beautifully doing it. And again, yeah. the animation is show is spectacular. Yeah. Um, um, but anyway, the next episode... Episode nine and ten, where it's where like a another arc here. I didn't really vibe with this one as much. I mm-hmm. thought it was some cool stuff but i don't really have a lot of thoughts about this one if like it was you just, have any thoughts it was just so you some can stuff outside share. it was just some stuff outside the empire where yeah. we, we see that there are similar things going on to the empire happening outside in the rest of the galaxy yep um uh, but again it's not not too much not too much happening in these two episodes yeah. um we, we got a little bit more depth with uh, uh, uh character development with omega yeah um which she i think really is the main part of these two episodes echo here um, yeah so, you know, I thought that was good. We got some good character development with her, but again, not mm-hmm. really much to say about them. They're they're fine. They're fine episodes. Yeah. Um, but it's hard to come after. It's it's hard to follow up after that heavy hitter. Those those two heavy hitters of seven and eight, which I think they came out on the same oh, absolutely. day, if I remember correctly. Yes, yes, yes. But I didn't watch them that day. I I didn't watch them till last week. I, oh, okay. Right? Yeah, yeah. Um. um so episode oh, eleven. Oh, oh, okay. And yeah, I, go ahead. I I will say what was the other thought I I had. I don't know. I'm not in your oh, brain. Oh, 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 uh, Sid. Like, it, yeah. it, it, it kind of was a weird beat with Sid where Sid didn't immediately volunteer to help them. Sid was like, oh, you have to be stranded sh- for like a couple of days here and then maybe I'll, I'll uh, help you here. It's like she's giving every reason for the Bad Batch to kind of like leave her. So I don't know what's going sucks. with that because, <laughs> yeah, because like they were pending up like a Sid arc early on in the season mm-hmm. and now it's kind of fallen off and she's just she's just you know there and i'm like are they gonna leave her is something gonna happen or are, are they gonna leave her and then something happens they have to be brought back in or what so yeah and we saw that continue in this episode in episode 11 which is called metamorphosis 
which phenomenal episode. Oh yeah, this insanely one was insanely good episode. But I we we, we, really we kind of see the direction that it goes in. Yeah, we see that they're kind of playing with leaving Sid, which yeah. mm-hmm. they which they said in the episode that they won't because she they know too she knows too much about them. And remember, the Empire thinks that he, they're dead. Yeah, does the Empire still think that they're dead? I can't well, Rampart remember never if it said, was. Rampart never told that. Rampart knows that they're not because the oh, okay. clone told him and then he killed that clone and then submitted that the uh, yeah yeah his this was from the second episode i think yeah yeah he submitted his uh his report or whatever saying <laughs> that he didn't mention the bad batch yeah yeah so okay, okay, he yeah, knows yeah. they're alive but who knows who's listening to him now mm-hmm. cuz he's mm-hmm. been arrested yeah um going against the empire or whatever i, I don't know what charge they're actually going to bring him up on but or if we'll ever see him again. I'm sure we will. Treason or yeah, whatever. Who like Who knows? Terrorism on the planet he destroyed. So, obviously, after this episode, they have a suspe- suspicion that they're alive because they're going to be hunting Omega. Yeah, yeah. Um, but anyway, so this episode does a lot for the rise of Skywalker. And yeah. if you remember, if you remember the end of episode at the end of season one of The Mandalorian, we saw that lab, that facility where clones St- were. Start of season two, right? Or was it the start of season two? It was at the end. Of, the, either the end of yeah. the season one or the start of season two. We saw that yeah, the laboratory in a mountain. This, I believe, this is the same one. This is Mount Tantis. Oh, maybe you're right. Maybe this is the same one. Um, so this is starting to fill in the gaps of Rise, Rise of Skywalker and how Palpatine returns. So basically, a little background. That'd be really uh, in Legends. The same one. Mount Tantus is uh, uh, in Legends. That's where it's used a lot after the uh, end of Return of the Jedi. It's where Palpatine had stored all his Sith relics and dark side oh. artifacts, and where he did a lot of his radical experimentation. And as we know, this is where they wanted Grogu to do more of that cloning. And as we learned in this episode, they've already started doing cloning, and they have Nala say, not Nala say, on the yeah, planet I, to do I, cloning. I believe so. Yeah, yeah. So this, they're starting to fill in gaps on one: how we get Ray's father, how we get Snoke, and how we get the return of Palpatine. Yeah. So we're going this far back in order yeah. to fill in some of these gaps, and I think they're that would be very wild. Yeah, that would be wild. If this, if this, if this is directly what they're setting up with all of this because that would be going way far ahead here. Mm-hmm. They are. So, or like, that's what it seems like. But anyway, um, so the beginning of the episode, we see there's just a ship come out of hyperspace and it's yeah. dead. It's dead to rights. Yeah, like, Im- immediately we're like, okay, this is a horror episode here, huh? Yes, and I got alien vibes and I loved it. And it really mm-hmm. shows that if Star Wars wanted to, and I think they should, they can go, they can make a horror movie horror show because there's just so many oh, yeah. just dark space. and scary things in start in space yeah yeah um and i really enjoyed that vibe we got from it mm-hmm. um yeah uh, anyway we found out that what they were carrying with the ship was carrying was a clone a clone of uh the zillow beast from the cl- yep. from the clone wars I, th- I think palpatine you know alluded something in that episode it's been a while since that's since i've seen it so i don't mm-hmm. remember but if like this really like resolve that arc and set up this whole yep. new arc here, like crazy episode. And yes. like it, it shows more of how ruthless the empire is because some town folks saw it maybe and they were all rounded up immediately. Every single one of them. Yep. Mm-hmm. And this this also connects to and I was watching a video afterwards because I wanted to know more about Mount Tantus because I was like, man, I've seen this before. And that's because of the Mandalorian. Um so I went so I went and they looked I looked it up. <clears throat> and um, they were talking about in, in Andor, they didn't want any of the prisoners to escape, so they kept lengthening because they saw things the Empire did not want them to see. And yeah. so that, that they're connecting what was happening in Andor with what's happening in the Bad Batch oh, with those okay. people. Because those people are going away. They're going to work in those factories like they were mm-hmm. on. Because they, they're, they're not going to get out because they don't want the Empire. They don't want people knowing what the Empire is actually doing. Yeah, no. So I thought that was an interesting connection to be made. Um. But yes, the Zillow Beast, it was an interesting connection to the Clone Wars, which I just completely forgot about. Um, and we found out near the end of the episode that Palpatine had that cloned during the Clone Wars, which I thought was interesting, which means he's been gone at this forever. Yeah. Man, he is he is an insane villain. Mm-hmm. Like, and he's just so smart and methodical. Metho- yeah. Methodic? 
he uses his methods. Methodical, yeah. yeah methodical, okay. Um, and so we basically at the uh, end of the episode we find out that Omega is now the next person they're hunting for. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Because they want Nala Say to cooperate. Yeah. Help them with their cloning efforts. So yeah. Man, it was a good episode. It was really good. Uh, Bad Batch, and it, I think it's the first time Disney Plus has ever overlapped Star Wars series. They yeah, had overlap with Star Wars and Marvel, but never Star Wars yeah. and Star Wars. So that, now you have Bad Batch and the Mandalorian on the same day. Yeah, and both phenomenal episodes on the same mm-hmm. day. And I yeah. definitely Bad Batch is overshadowed by Mandalorian, but that Bad Batch episode is awesome. Yeah. So I'm interested to see where things go from there. Do we know how long season two is supposed to be? I want to say 22 episodes, but I don't know. Yeah. How we're about many halfway through this season. Episodes in Bad Batch Season 2. Uh 22 is it 20? 16. Oh god, there's only five left? There's only five left, yeah. Oh wow. god, I thought there'd be somewhere in the 20s. Okay. Well, they don't have well, so they have five episodes to hunt down Omega. Yeah. Looks I've, like it. And that, I, see that, that makes I, me I also kind of am more intrigued. excited at the same time. Yeah, and and I, I'm intrigued where we will see Crosshair ag- again next because we saw yes. in episode three and that's been it. So mm-hmm. yeah, this this whole season, like a lot of people had their qualms with Bad Batch season one, but this this season's been awesome. Yeah, it's had a, it's had mostly high points. I mean, there's been Ooh. a couple like middle yeah. middle points, but for the most part, it's been fantastic. Yeah. Um. So that's all I have on Bad Batch. That's all my thoughts on Bad Batch. And as we're well, running I just think. out of. Hour and 45 minutes. Hey, um, we didn't have to have any ad breaks no, this time. No, because I I did things with Zoom. Mm-hmm. I got tired of the ad breaks. Mm-hmm. So um if you guys like this episode, and I us, hope you give did. Give us a like. But subscribe no pressure. Us, tell us the truth. Us wherever you're listening to this episode. If you didn't like us, that's okay. That's fine. Please don't tell us. But if oh, you did yeah, like I us, mean, give us a review. I think yeah. review is warranted. Yeah. Um I if you can. I mean Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Like, give subscribe here wherever you're listening to sure. it. Subscribe to my YouTube and subscribe channel. there where you're not li- listening to it. Go there any anyway and exactly. double subscribe. Exactly. Uh, subscribe yeah. to my channel, Wolf Get Entertainment. Subscribe to Brennan's, not Brennan. Yes, that's, I am. That's okay. the name. Of, of I don't YouTube know why. Is not Brennan. I, I don't know why he, he keeps calling me this. I don't know who <laughs> Brennan is. I'm not Brennan. I keep telling him. Uh, uh, go subscribe to not 234 230 episodes in. Uh, not Brennan. We're not doing three episodes in yet. Yet. Mm-hmm. Well, with the pace we're going, it's going to be a couple of decades. So <laughs> it's it's going to be a while. Um, we appreciate you guys listening every week. Uh, episode 57 in the books. Uh, peace out. Peace.